What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata Grand Touring. Huge thanks to Mazda for providing me with this very nice new and improved 2019 Miata to review for you guys today. So about the 2019 Miata, well, it looks the same on the outside as the 2018 that I just reviewed uh, earlier this year, but uh, the main news here is that new engine. So it's the same two liter Skyactiv, but it's been heavily revised to give you more power, a higher red line and all those things should make it almost certainly drive much better uh, than it already did which was already fantastic to start with but uh, I especially love uh, you know one thing here at the Grand Touring is uh, you have a little bit more color options so this eternal blue color uh, is also available on the Grand Touring only uh, not available on the lower trims this is of course the top trim of the Miata here and it looks really really good in this color especially with that tan leather interior out back uh, one interesting thing for 2019 is now that a backup camera is federally mandated it's finally been added to the Miata here but the way they integrate it is just straight in the middle of the rear bumper there instead of maybe tucking it underneath that uh, rear license plate uh, frame or something like that you know having it right there in the middle of the bumper isn't the cleanest of installations in my opinion um, but I'm truly nitpicking here because otherwise you know the Miata still looks fantastic for 2019. Right so the interior of the 2019 Miata well it's mostly the same uh, but first off these seats are really comfortable now being the Grand Touring you don't have the Recaro seats that's you know, a little bit unfortunate if you're an enthusiast, but if you're an enthusiast, you'll probably most likely be going for the club model anyway, since that's the sportier trim that has the Bilstein dampers and a little bit of better handling and braking. Um, this one here, you know, it's the Grand Touring, it's supposed to be a little more comfortable anyway, uh, and these seats are certainly comfortable. They just are really, just the, the way they contour, at least my body, they're very, very comfortable, and I think they'll be comfortable for most people. You don't have adjustable uh, lumbar support or anything though, unfortunately, um, but you do have a little bit of an adjustment here to raise and lower the seat. Bottom them a little bit and overall yeah they still have really good bolstering too for a regular seat here and so I'm really impressed these are really great seats still and it's also worth noting that in the base model, you still get the same seats, they're just cloth instead of leather. Um, so even if you get a base Miata, you'll still have very comfortable and supportive seats. Next to the steering wheel here in the Miata, which is mostly unchanged, it's the same great steering wheel. It's you know, got a perfect nine and three grip, nice little 10 and two notches, uh, just a nice thin wheel that just is great to use and just feels great in your hands. There's a few buttons and nicely trimmed here with some metal accents, it looks great. But the big news here for taller people especially is now the wheel is telescoping um, which is a really big deal and required a lot of engineering actually to make that work here in this small packaging and uh, while you know retaining a similar weight and so that means that if you're taller you'll be able to have a more comfortable driving position thanks to that telescoping steering wheel. Another uh, couple of cool improvements here are going on to the gauges. Uh, first off front and center you have that large tachometer again uh, but this time you have that higher red line of 7500 rpm instead of 6800 and that's reflected there nicely in the tack but it's uh, just really cool to see that always front and center a little analog uh, speedometer on the right and on the left it used to just be a little black and white display and I don't think this is only the Grand Touring I think all 2019 Miatas uh, have this new digital display there on the left and that kind of reflects what you see in stuff like the new Mazda 6 and other Mazda models that now have that same display and it still shows basically the same stuff as the black and white display so you're not missing out on much if you don't have it but it is nice to kind of update this a little bit make it a little more high-tech looking and just goes through your basic trip information for the most part uh, but nice to have that nonetheless and a really cool little improvement. Coming over to the center here you also have uh, this nice 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system. Uh, unfortunately though the touch part doesn't work if you're driving. That's a typical Mazda thing. You have this little controller down here instead to uh, you know work all those types of things uh, which you know it works decently enough. One of, the, one of the easier controllers to use out there uh, but you know still just wish you could use the touchscreen all the time especially here on the Miata. It's a close enough reach you, you know it's not like it's out of the way or too distracting if you were to just touch something I honestly think it'd be easier um, but anyway still just a really great little screen that has you know very simple uh, audio controls things like that would be nice to have a tune knob though because you still just have this little volume knob way back here behind this uh, rotary controller there's two things that are a little unfortunate about this infotainment system though uh, first off is that although other 2019 Mazdas do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support several of the models have been confirmed to be getting it here uh, the Miata is not one of them so uh, you know it's most likely going to be able to be retrofitted by your dealer down the road but currently does not offer it and Mazda hasn't offered a timeline for when it's actually going to be coming to the Miata here uh, so in the meantime you know you don't have it unfortunately which is a bummer um, but uh, another un bummer unfortunately that I have to report is that they ditched the CD player completely in every single trim of the Miata so even in this fully loaded Grand Touring 
you still do not even have an option for a CD player anymore. So uh, you're just restricted to USB connectivity, Bluetooth audio, and of course your you know radio options that are uh, available here. Satellite radio is available on the club and higher trims. That's you know standard. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer there, but uh, not a huge deal. Otherwise, though, of course, this being a very small little road, so you just have your uh, climate controls, which are automatic here in the Grand Touring. Other models, they're manual, uh, and have nice trim around them here and uh, get the job done well. Storage space in the MX-5 is, uh, you know, not bad for a vehicle this small. You know, you don't have anything in the doors, but you do have a little pocket here in the center um, that does have a space wide enough for probably a smaller smartphone to, you know, slip in there, and a two USB jacks and auxiliary jack in there. You don't have a glove box in the Miata either, interestingly. Um, but you do have this little center armrest here, and it's nicely padded and actually very comfortable for putting your elbow on. And anyway, you open that up, and you'll see a small little uh, area there. You could fit sunglasses if they weren't in a hard case or something. You could fit those in there, you know, other very small things, tickets, things like that. That's about it. You wouldn't have enough space for a phone in there either. Uh, and then you have uh, your cup holder arrangement, which is always interesting in the Miatas. You know, there are these little removable things. You can plug one in here like you see, and then there's also two spaces here in the back. So if you would rather have both in the back, you can have them there. Or you can remove all of them or, you know, have as little or as many as you want. So you could potentially buy an even a third one somewhere else and have three cup holders in here um, so anyway uh, cool to have those and uh, they work fairly well for the type of cup holders they are not too deep or anything but should be good enough for this vehicle and then you have this little uh, cubby back here which actually goes pretty deep and far back there and you can fit the owner's manual in there that's where you, you would keep all your documents you usually have in the glove box and so a good amount of space there and behind the seats, you also have another little cubby. You could probably stuff a jacket or something in there. That's about it. Um, but nice to have that nonetheless. They try and give you as much as they possibly can. Speaking of space, trunk space here in the Miata is actually really good for a little roadster. You know, it's bigger than something like the F-Type, actually, which is a larger vehicle. Um, and, you know, it goes nice and deep there and pretty wide as well. And so overall, again, for such a small vehicle, I think it's a really good sized trunk. One other thing I have to mention I love about the Miata interior is uh, these body color interior panels you know it reminds you of stuff from the 50s and 60s that had body colored interior panels and as a retro lover I absolutely love that I wish that was something that would uh, become uh, fashionable again in car interiors because I think that is so cool and I absolutely love that about the Miata all right, so start them go for a drive. Uh, the Miata key is the same key getting any other Mazda. A nice, small, slim little key, which is fantastic. With a lot of other keys getting huge these days, I love how small and tiny it is. It's just great. And it uh, feels nice, too, with the metal buttons. But, of course, it's keyless access, keyless entry, and push-button start here, at least uh, in these higher trim levels. So, anyway, you just put your uh, foot on the clutch, hit the brake, and hit the edge of start button, and it starts right up. And I love the way it revs like 2,000 RPMs every time you start it up. All right, so setting off in the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata. So, uh, first thing you notice, so, you know, it has a new dual-mass flywheel, which I thought would maybe make the clutch engagement a little trickier than, uh, you know, in the past, but uh, so far it seems to be basically uh, just as easy to use. I don't really feel any kind of uh, change, honestly, which is a, a compliment, to, considering it used to have the single-mass uh, flywheel. Very easy to drive the Miata, of course. Uh, just a nice, light clutch, nice, small, light, precise shifter. It's just so precise. I love this little shifter in the ND. Miatas, uh, of course, a very small vehicle, so visibility is excellent, especially with the top down. You know, it's just so tiny, very easy to park and everything. Of course, whenever you have the top up, uh, you do have a little bit of a blind spot over your shoulder there, um, but not a huge deal. And I feel like most people, hopefully, whenever you buy a Miata, you drive with the top down and enjoy it. You know, it's a pretty cool fall day here, and even still, you know, I got the heated seats, I got the uh, heated, uh, you know, just the heat coming out of the vents here. Don't have a heated steering wheel, unfortunately. That would probably be a nice thing, at least in the Grand Touring, um, but not the case here. But anyway, uh, you know, it's totally fine, and it's just really great to drive at the top down. I absolutely love convertibles, and this one uh, is just so, you just experience the elements so much more in this, you know? It just, the windshield kind of stops a little bit uh, sooner than some of the other, you know, larger convertibles, so you really can take in your surroundings so much better in a Miata than even you can in other convertibles. And, uh, of course, as it's so small, you just, you know, you're not isolated from anything. You hear every sound, even 
with the top up for the most part. You hear every little thing, you feel everything. Uh, of course, it's not rough, it doesn't beat you up or anything. It's just, you really, you know, their, their slogan is feel alive. And I really hate to use a manufacturer's slogan, but that really is accurate to the Miata. You feel more alive driving it than you do driving even other convertibles, but especially other sports cars. But let's turn down onto this back road here. See how it does with this new red line. I can't wait. Here we go. in a typical hot rodding procedure as Mazda put it to actually just make it more powerful. You now have 181 horsepower, that's 26 more than before, 151 pound-feet of torque which is three more than before but that 26 extra horsepower is huge going from 155 to 181 but you have that higher red line is 7500 rpms now instead of 6800 and if you watched my 2018 Miata review you will know that one of the main things that I said it's a fantastic vehicle but I just wish it had a higher red line and and uh, Mazda already had that planned at that point and they uh, rolled it out here very quickly and uh, I'm so in love with that higher red line. I want to just try that out a few more times. But so to go into a little more detail as far as what all they did to the engine. So Mazda went into a lot of detail as far as how much lighter some of the you know individual components are. But basically to summarize, it has a sportier throttle body. It has a larger intake and exhaust uh, valves and ports. Uh, it has a, a lighter crankshaft that's been beefed up. It's got lighter pistons, uh, all of those types of things that you know it's all the things you can do to improve the engine internals they've done in order to give you that extra horsepower no turbos nothing else weird going on just a good old-fashioned stronger engine a little acceleration <laughs> She makes you bring it all the way up to 7,000 for that peak horsepower number, but torque comes on, I think, about 400 RPM sooner, which is fantastic. So you have, it feels just as punchy as it did before. You didn't sacrifice any of that. It actually feels slightly more punchy than before, um, but then you have way more top end and it just wants to pull and, oh, it's it's really perfect. Uh, but anyway, we're coming up some corners here. Let's see how it handles. No sport mode or anything in the Miatas. We do have summer tires here and it's currently 51 degrees, so a little bit cooler, but still should be perfectly fine and within their operating temperature and it grips pretty well now the Grand Touring doesn't have the B Bilstein dampers doesn't have the Brembo brakes uh, or the uh, you know larger wheels uh, the BBS's that you get in the uh, club one but uh, boy it still handles fantastically well that acceleration <laughs> Seven seconds now versus uh, about 6.2 before some magazines were able to get a little bit quicker than that uh, but overall it's definitely faster you know whether it's by a half second or a few tenths of a second it still is faster regardless and that's appreciated um, but oh it just everything feels so good in the Miata you know I, the steering is so precise uh, just you know, throttle response is so immediate thanks to it being a naturally aspirated engine and just being so well dialed in by Mazda. Brakes still actually have nice bite. You know, it's such a light vehicle at only 2,345 pounds, seven more than before, even despite the fact you have a telescoping steering wheel and have uh, the you know extra horsepower and stuff. It still does a really good job. And now we've got up to traffic, and of course they have to go slow again. Um, but man, it just it feels so good you know it has that nice light feeling and uh, this actually seems to handle even a little bit better than the Grand Touring that I drove several years ago now they didn't change the suspension at all between 2018s and 2019s so suspension is completely unchanged they focus on the engine and that's just fine with me because the suspension didn't need any kind of fixing uh, they, they just uh, did exactly what everyone wanted gave it a little more power and left the suspension alone which I'm very grateful for and so it just really makes this feel fantastic and I think, you know, the ride is definitely a little softer and a little more supple here in the Grand Touring and also would be in the base, uh, you know, sport version than the club with its sportier Bilstein tuned, you know, dampers and larger wheels. <laughs> well, it definitely feels so much more zippy though. Woo! I honestly 
Why? I don't want any more power in the Miata. This is actually perfect. Like, it doesn't need anything more. This is so perfect for the Miata. It's still, you know, just enough. You can still ring it out and have fun and not immediately be thrown in jail, like, you know, higher horsepower vehicles these days. Um, but it's, it, you know, it never makes you feel like it's too slow. You know, in previous Miatas, honestly, I didn't mind the ND personally. I just wish that there was a little more to play with as far as gearing, and that's why I wanted the higher red line. Um, but, you know, the extra power is so welcome, but it's still, it's so, so perfect. I am, man, I am loving this thing. Dollar acceleration. <laughs> it just keeps making me laugh. I love it. <laughs> oh, man, this is, oh, Mazda, I love you so much. Thank you for just doing the absolute perfect thing and just doing a phenomenal job on this new Miata. But anyway, thanks to Mazda, I'm going to have this Miata for an entire week, so I'm gonna drive around all week and see what it's like to live with, and I'll come back and give you guys my final thoughts and also my final fuel economy and any other things that I noticed during my time driving it. I've been driving the 2019 Miata here for several more days now. Unfortunately, I have a trip that I have to go on, so I only had five days for this instead of seven, uh, like I usually do, but it still has been such a blast. I absolutely love this new engine, uh, you know, the new red line, the more additional power. The power is especially nice, even on the highway, you know, because six gear is still fairly short. It's not so short that it's boomy on the highway or anything, but it just means you have really good passing power. You don't even need to downshift anymore in the Miata in order to pass people at highway speeds. It's really got a nice amount of punch to it. And I honestly, there hasn't been a single time where I wish that I had more power. I, it's completely sufficient. And I mean, I daily drive a 480 horsepower Mustang. And it, with this amount of power in the Miata, it's perfect for this small, light little car. There wasn't a single time where I wished for more power. And so uh, it just goes back to what I was saying earlier. It's really like the perfect Miata. They perfected it. I. I don't really know how you get much better than this. I think the only little caveat is, you know, I still wish it had a little bit of a sweeter exhaust sound, but that's something you can fix in the aftermarket. Um, aside from that, I think that's the only thing. It doesn't have an amazing sounding engine or exhaust, and that's one great thing with Roadsters often, is you can put the top down and hear the engine note. And with an exhaust, it would be better, but it's still not, you know, um, a very uh, musically oriented engine. You know, it's a little more, I mean, it still has a sweeter sound, especially in those upper RPMs, and I really like the way that it, you know, sounds still, but it's it's still not as sweet as you know some of the other stuff you know, if it's you know v6 or v8 configurations like you see in some of uh, the other vehicles out there of course none of them can even get close to the value proposition of the miata here though i mean it's just that's one of the amazing things about the miata is they kept it so affordable and they didn't try and you know give it boatloads of power or make it huge and bloated and stuff so that means that yeah you know, for a daily driver, this might be a little cramped for some. Uh, you know, me being five foot nine, uh, you know, I feel fairly, you know, it's it's not too cramped or anything, but I do wish, you know, there was a little more space, uh, you know, just because it, it's just a small car. So, you know, for me personally, as a daily driver, I'd probably want a little more space to spread out and put things and stuff like that. Um, but you could totally daily drive one of these things if you don't, you know, carry a lot of stuff with you or uh, end up needing a lot of space. You could totally daily drive this. It's very comfortable, especially here in the uh, Grand Touring trim. Uh, speaking of the trim, though, one other thing I wanted to mention uh, that kind of to uh, add on to my back road review earlier was uh, this does have the GTS package, which I wasn't aware of until uh, later on whenever I checked. And so the GTS package does give you the Bilstein dampers, uh, the limited slip differential, and the strut tower brace. And that's a new option for 2019 here. I think it's only like 550 bucks, totally worth it for those improvements. And so that's why, you know, this felt so similar to the, to the club model to me because it has the same uh, kind of suspension damping as the club model. You just don't have the Brembo brakes or the one inch uh, larger wheels. So that's why this still feels a little bit softer, but it's almost like a happy medium. You know, you don't have, I mean, not that the uh, suspension in the club is too stiff or anything, but this, I just, it, this feels just a tiny bit more comfortable while still having excellent flat handling and really could be the sweet spot. And I do, uh, you know, appreciate uh, the leather interior you have here and the uh, Grand Touring is nice. I especially love the tan. That's really great with a convertible, especially so the sun doesn't heat up the leather as much as it would with black uh, leather interiors. And um, 
So that's a really cool package to have. And uh, again, it's very, very affordably priced, especially compared to like the BBS uh, Brembo Recaro package. Or the BBS uh, Brembo Recaro, yeah, that package is like, I think 4,500 bucks on the club models. And that uh, could get pricey, uh, you know, and drives a club model up to around 35,000. This one, uh, as tested, is about 32,100. Um, and then you add on that package, I think it'd be more around 32 and a half with that GTS package. So still very, uh, I think very reasonable considering what you're getting here. You know, it's right in line with the uh, hard top competitors like the uh, Toyota GT86 and the, uh, you know, Super BRZ. Those, you know, in the limited trims, you know, their top trims also creep around that uh, that area there and uh, can even go a little bit higher with their, you know, limited edition versions and stuff. So um, I think it's, comp it's and it's, it, honestly, this feels more peppy to me than a BRZ or an 86 because it's, you know, like 500 pounds lighter and, um, you know, still has a very similar amount of power now, which is just makes, <laughs> this is just, it is so much fun. It's the perfect Miata, and it's really, really close to just being a perfect car. Like I said, the exhaust is the only thing holding it back. Another thing that's phenomenal about these smaller roadsters like the Miata is uh, the fuel economy. So these are rated at 26 on the hi 26 in the city, 34 on the highway, which is one MPG higher than before on the highway, thanks to, I guess, the more powerful engine. Um, and then it also does about 29 MPG combined as the uh, EPA rating, the estimate. So in my uh, 125 miles of driving here, there was a decent amount of highway driving. I'd say maybe like 30 to 40 percent of it was highway driving. Um, but anyway, uh, my fuel economy average was 31.3, which is well above that combined average. And that was assuming with a combined EPA would be uh, assuming 50-50 split of city and highway. So this is less than that, and it's still doing outperforming that combined number by over two MPG. So I think uh, those uh, EPA numbers are conservative. I think if you took it easy, or even if you didn't take it easy, I've been driving this car fairly hard um, and it still is returning excellent fuel economy. So I think you could probably pretty safely assume you're gonna get a little bit better fuel economy, honestly, than uh, than what the EPA rates it at. So uh, it's fantastic, you know, like I said, I can't find anything to complain about it. It's just a fantastic little car. I absolutely love one. I I'd love to have one, honestly, I, I think. Um, you know, as a second car, especially as a you know, weekend vehicle or something, this is tough to beat. The value is just through the roof. And it makes you really wonder, do you need more horsepower? Uh, especially in a roadster, but you know, just this, just simplifying everything, keeping everything light and agile and, and just easy and simple and uncomplicated. There isn't any sport mode to toggle. All you have is a little trash control button uh, and that's it as far as driving dynamics go. So, I mean, it's just so good with all that stuff. And uh, it just, I, I love the simplicity of it. This is really, really perfect to me. I absolutely adore the little Miata here for 2019. It's a, uh, that just I can't say higher praise uh, than I have already given it. I absolutely love it, and it's seriously tempting to buy one, you know, as a weekend car. But anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so a huge thanks once again to Mazda for providing me with the uh, 2019 Miata here to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on these in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.